What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to basketball. More importantly, welcome back to our season preview series. This is the series where we're going to break down all 30 NBA teams before the start of the regular season. We go extremely in-depth in these videos. We're talking everything from rotations to depth charts. What do their assets look like in terms of salary and draft capital? What their offseason look like? Different trade ideas. Everything that you need to be ready for the start of the regular season. In this video, we have a recent champion in the Denver Nuggets. So hey, this should be a good one. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and comment. I've responded to every single comment to my YouTube channel up to this point, and I intend to keep on doing so. All right, let's get into it. All right, y'all, as you can see, there is a lot to get into as always with these videos. And that's why we've got the preseason preview spreadsheet. These are spreadsheets that I put together. They're not the prettiest thing in the world, but they get the job done. Um, I like to put these little things together to kind of help articulate and visualize the things that I'm talking about in these videos. If you want access to the spreadsheet, it's a pretty simple process. All you have to do is leave me a comment or something along the lines of saying like, hey, I would like access to the spreadsheet. Cool, I'll drop you a reply with a link to the Discord. By the way, the Discord's always linked in the bio or, or in the description anyway feel free to hop on there but once you hop on the discord just shoot me another dm on there being like hey i was from youtube this person like can i have the spreadsheet i'll give it to you right there it boosts my algorithm you get a spreadsheet everybody wins but anyway let's talk about the denver nuggets and also before i do that if you guys were curious this is the same day that i'm recording uh, another video i've got like a business trip that i have to do this weekend i'm going and working with a team or something like that so i just have to pre-record a couple of these like last ones but hey this is the second to last video in this series we're we're almost here we're almost at preseason. this is this is exciting stuff right i'm i'm really really excited about this we've got the denver nuggets here and look the nuggets are gonna be a contender right they had a they had a sad off season though, didn't they? It was a uh, it's it's been a sad off season. Obviously the departure of Contavious Caldwell Pope, they made a really good draft play and then it blew up in their face during summer league like 2 minutes in. It's it's unfortunate, but this is still the Denver Nuggets. We've still got a huge part of the championship core right here. Not that long ago, and I think a lot of us forget on the internet, this team just recently won the NBA Finals, and most of these players are still here. A lot of you guys, after one season where they don't win, it's like, you got to trade this person. You got to trade this person. Shut up. Just shut up. This team already won. They can do it again. Just shut up. It's hard to win every single year. It's just hard. But anyway, a lot of this team's coming back. It's going to be an interesting season. I mean, you look at the season that they had last year and it was productive. There were certainly questions about the bench, though. That was going to be a big thing, and that's going to be that's going to continue to be a question in this video today because of the way that the NBA has changed the rules and when when it comes to the salary cap. And we'll talk about those because the Nuggets are the biggest example across the NBA right now, and teams are I can promise you internally using them as an example of if you don't maintain your players, you're you're going to struggle. It's going to be very hard with how the rules are set up nowadays. But the Nuggets are a good team. They're going to be in contention as always when you have the best player in basketball and probably the best like combo in a Jamal Murray Nikola Jokic pick and roll like it's just still probably the hardest thing to stop in basketball unless you're counting Giannis when he's a foot away from the hoop right but it, it's it's going to be a good team it just is but what what kind of moves can we make to improve this team it's going to be challenging and it's going to be interesting but we'll talk about it all today so anyway last year 57 and 25 great record right we expect a similar output from them this year they're obviously a contending team these are the four levels that i kind of rank people by you can be selling rebuilding growing or contending this team is definitely a contender goals i always like to talk about goals at the beginning of these videos because they're going to come up at other parts during it so i want us to keep them in the back of our minds as we're going through all these way more fun tabs later in the video so goals add depth the bench is looking a little bit scary right now with a lot of question marks like i can maybe talk myself into some things hopefully happening but that's the best case scenario like that i have to talk myself into things hopefully happening you know that's that that's the best i can do with this bench it's rough you've got a pretty good starting five after that i've got some questions and how are we going to do that I don't know. It's going to be complicated, but we're going to try to find some ways to make it happen. Uh, next thing, trade Zeke Naji. Zeke Naji is one of the few guys on this roster that is making like a normal or an okay salary because it's a lot of salary on top, not much salary on the bottom of this roster. Zeke Naji somewhere in the middle and he doesn't play and he's not looking very good right now. So we have to find a way to move him. It's not going to be easy, but I think there's some ways to do it. And then just stay healthy, right? This team cannot afford to lose people. Uh, we talked about a lack of depth and everything. Got to stay healthy. Jamal Murray, right? Uh, Aaron Gordon, Michael Porter Jr. Uh, Jokic usually does a pretty good job of staying healthy. And maybe that's just because he doesn't move very fast. But regardless, this team needs to stay healthy because it just doesn't have much to ride on otherwise. So anyway, 
Let's go talk about this offseason. Maybe Nuggets fans don't want me to, but let's go talk about it. All right, so here's the offseason. It's um, it's pretty basic to look at, honestly, but there's a lot of recognizable names on here. If you've been following NBA for any amount of time, you should recognize everybody on this list, except maybe the drafted players thing, but that is what it is. So for those of you unfamiliar with the series, I break the offseason down into three separate parts. Drafted players, you can understand what that means because you're smart. Player departures, players that were on the full-time roster last year, no longer on the full-time roster. And then players brought in either foreign guys or other guys throughout the NBA that they brought in either via trade or free agency whatever right so it's always best to start off with the draft because that's what happened in chronological order the Nuggets made a trade with what I believe was the Suns where they turned a bunch of second round picks into a first round pick which is brilliant by them a brilliant move by them we've seen them do that stuff in the past the Nuggets are one of those teams that set the standard of like hey we want to keep our first round picks when we're in contention because we can use these back end first round picks and get cheap players to put at the end of our bench right we can start developing them we get them for four years plus we can sign them to whatever else afterwards because we can match whatever contract so we get a guy that we can just grow in our our system and turn into something and it's just it's a phenomenal strategy and this year they used a bunch of second round picks that they had to go draft Deron Holmes Deron Holmes was a guy that in all honesty I wasn't like too high on before I started really diving into like film and everything and there was a quite a few of you in the comments that were telling me early on that they're like yeah you got to watch more Deron Holmes or something like that and I was like Okay, I'll go watch more of him. I haven't seen enough of him, and I haven't seen a lot of other people talking about him. But the more I started jumping into the film, I liked him, and he, he started shooting up my draft board a lot more. I was like, okay, this guy's a stellar athlete. He's more than capable from behind the arc, which is awesome. Uh, he's smart. He doesn't need the basketball. He plays good defense. He was a solid passer. And so I'm like, okay, I don't like there's, I wouldn't say there's like a ton of star potential in him, but I'm like, this is, this could be a really good connecting piece. And Denver was looking for size off the bench last year. This is a guy that can be an athlete and go play a couple different positions he can space and, and play with Jokic at the same time like he's more than used to getting passes from centers especially in the corners hitting from there awesome right we all saw this we're like oh that's a great pick that's a great pick by Denver and then summer league happens and what I think it was his Achilles I think he tore his Achilles like two to four minutes into the game or something like that and he was hooping and look summer league is uh, you guys have heard me say before, there's no correlation between summer league success and NBA success. We just don't see anything like that. But I mean, in the little bit he was in, he was hoping for Denver summer league. And then he goes down. He is out for the season. I don't know if they've like done a disabled player exception yet or anything for him. I have to imagine they're going to get something. So they'll be able to replace him somehow, some way. But uh, it's just so unfortunate, you know, because every year is crucial when you're in a championship window and you just don't see, like to see guys miss their rookie seasons and everything, especially because he won't be able to be on the court and learning those things, right? He's just going to be watching from the sidelines, sitting in his chair, doing his exercises. I've seen way too many guys rehab this type of stuff. That's that's how it is. You got to keep your ears open and your eyes wide when you're in those times. I've seen many freshmen come in and tear their ACLs and that's what happened I actually had a, a freshman center for me come in he was a seven foot dude he tore his ACL on the first day of his freshman year right he rehabs his whole freshman year comes back the next year first day of what would be his red shirt freshman season and with a minute left in practice tore his other ACL then they called it a career for him after that he was like nope that's that's it I, I can't do this anymore but man it is brutal to watch so we wish Deron Holmes the best it was a great draft pick it's unfortunate that we're not going to get to see him this year moving on to player departures Sorry, y'all. It's not going to get much better. This is this is one of the glaring things from this NBA offseason that we saw, and it's a it's a crucial lesson to learn. Contavious Caldwell Pope left for the Orlando Magic. So the way that the NBA salary cap works now is they're very much incentivizing teams to keep their own players. Uh, with the way that the cap is set up and everything, um, you can't really go over the cap to sign players coming from other teams, right? The Orlando Magic were one of the few teams that had cap room that could actually go out and sign someone, and it made sense for them to go out and sign him, right? For the Denver Nuggets, you, you can bring back your own player, right? But they only have so much salary cap room left, and I know a lot of you guys know this already. I'm just explaining for those that don't understand. Just because they lose a player, it doesn't mean they automatically have that money to spend because losing Contavious Caldwell Pope didn't bring them under the cap. So you basically just lost KCP, and all you did was open up a roster spot for a minimum contract guy. That's it, right? And that's the lesson that we're learning with these new rules and everything, right? Like these aprons and all these different things that we'll talk about. It's just, it's unfortunate. You have to do what you can to keep your players more often than not. And it doesn't seem like Denver was interested in giving him that long term of a contract. And that's unfortunate because he was a big part of their team. He was one of that starting five that won the finals, obviously. So 
it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate to see him go. He's just going to be missed on this team. They don't have an immediate answer for his replacement. Uh, Reggie Jackson was a guy that they moved on from, which is fine. Reggie Jackson was a quality backup point guard. He had some moments for them. He also had some moments where he wasn't as great, right? I know they were, like, he was an answer on a bench that was really struggling. A guy, like I said, that sometimes was producing, but it wasn't great overall, so... Not the worst thing in the world that he's gone. Justin Holiday was actually a pretty effective player for them. Uh, if we pull up Justin Holiday's numbers, like these Holiday brothers just keep finding ways to be impactful players. He was only getting you four points a game, but he was shooting 40% from three. He, like he had a really quick trigger. He could really get the ball up, which was awesome when you're playing with a guy like Jokic, right? All you had to do was wait. And he actually still plays pretty quality defense despite like his frame, which you would think would make him um, a less sturdy defender than he is. But again, those Holiday boys, man, they just figure it out. So... We wouldn't be surprised if he finds his way back onto a roster. He always seems to at some point in the season because people are like, man, yeah, dude, just he can contribute is what he can do. Right. So is what it is. But you look at the departures, it's um, it's tough. The KCP one is impossible to swallow. You just couldn't let it happen. And it did happen, unfortunately. Uh, Reggie Jackson, you do make up for later and we'll talk about in Justin Holiday. You have questions on the wing right now, and maybe there's better solutions, but hurts to see. Um, players they brought in. Uh, look, this front office is doing a good job, like, overall. Like, they're finding talent. They brought in Russell Westbrook, and we all know the pros and cons of Russell Westbrook, right? I mean, dude plays his ass off everywhere he goes nobody's question that he's a great teammate he's gonna play really hard-nosed defense he's gonna make things happen on the basketball court and this guy alone could win you a playoff game he could he's a former mvp and like it's a debatable like mvp or like whatever but regardless like this is an extremely talented basketball player that's still in incredible shape and he can just he can make a difference for you him coming off the bench is an improvement for them that is way better than having reggie jackson it just is the shot is not there. It's not going to be there. But look, this is a very smart basketball player all said and done. Maybe you can say his shot selection is a little bit questionable, but this dude knows basketball, right? And playing with a guy like Jokic, I, I just, I don't foresee this being a bad thing. I can see Russell Westbrook playing off ball and having a lot of success, cutting to the rim, just being super aggressive on V cuts and stuff like that, playing off of Jokic, getting each other into the right spot. I actually think it's a really good pairing. Um, obviously, we'd like to see him get his three-point shot up and everything, but otherwise, I like Westbrook coming off the bench. I think it'll be a valuable part to their team. They also added Dario Saric, which I think was a phenomenal addition. Dario Saric can play the four or the five. He's mostly been playing the five at this point at this point of his career. Uh, you look at some of the outside shooting numbers and everything, and like that's obviously where he can provide a lot of value. He's a smart passer from the post. He could play the four and play off of Jokic as a spacing option, which you know could open up some offensive things for him. He's going to be a quality enough rotation player. Um, and again, this team was really searching for like backup center, backup big minutes for whenever Jokic was off the court. We were hoping between Duran, Holmes, and Saric that we would have enough at that, even though they're not like true defensive centers, because I think that's something that this team would really love to have. But given the situation that you're in and the cap space is not there, I mean, I think this is one of the better signings that you could have made. So it's a good one. I do want to look at his shot chart quick, though. This is what we're seeing out of Dario Saric. I mean, a lot of what he did in like like Golden State and stuff recently was a lot of pick and pop, right? Like that's really what he's known for. But honestly, when you get him around the rim, he's pretty effective as well, which is nice. I mean, he's a big body. He's he knows how to control his weight and everything. So I'm not surprised that he was pretty effective down there. But pick and pop situations using him with Jamal Murray as well, I think could be valuable for this team. And I, I don't know, like we'd obviously like to see some more corner opportunities if we feel really comfortable about putting him and Jokic on the court together. But at the very least, he's got a very good good um we'll call it uh efficient or analytically sound shot chart which is good he's gonna need to play smart basketball to play here so i like the sarge edition i think it's a good one let's go talk about the rest of the roster now all right y'all y'all know this is my favorite tab on the entire workbook uh, this is basically my ideal off-season spreadsheet i think it's really good because it shows us a couple of different things one it gives us a current roster breakdown just to be like okay who do we got who do we who are we spending money on who could we move that we're spending money on what kind of options are we working with right like what are the actual player assets do we have we can look at the overall salary cap information which is important right we need to know what what are the rules that we're working with in terms of moves what kind of draft capital do we have spoiler alert not much and then overall just a depth chart so we can look through everything and be like okay where are our holes right what kind of holes do we need to fill or fill with this team but i think a good place to start is always with the draft picks 
it's it's not much right it's not much this team spent like most of its second round picks to go get homes and now they kind of just don't have many more to work with you always want as a championship level team to have those second round picks because of the reason that i talked about earlier as you get these like expensive players on your team which you need to be a championship contender right you're gonna want these cheap guys on the team like the jalen pickett's or the hunter tysons and stuff young guys that you feel like maybe you could develop into some sort of role player or something eventually but the point is they only take up 1.8 million dollars of your salary cap space i mean something that we'll talk about here is the fact that this team hasn't hit the second apron yet which is important for them right it's just going to be important uh, that they don't hit that apron so for the time being them not having any second round picks sucks i mean you'd feel a lot better if Holmes was available to you right now because you'd have something to show for it but you don't and none of these picks you're probably looking to trade this year maybe you want to trade like that 2031 nuggets pick because I, I don't know. You just feel like the right person becomes available, but I'd be I'd be pretty I'd be pretty careful with that because as soon as you get into the second apron and we'll talk about it, that's the team you got pretty much. It gets really hard to move down from there. So let's talk about salary cap. There's four levels that you need to know about when it comes to NBA uh, salary cap, and I know you guys that have been watching these videos up until this point, you should go watch them all. Um, if if you've been watching these videos, you already know where I'm going with this stuff. Um, there's a much more in-depth breakdown of all of these in my first video or two. It's the Celtics and Grizzlies video, but for the time being, here's the little things you need to know. We've got the cap line in itself. They've obviously crossed that because that's at zero. Once you hit, once you cross the cap line, you can only sign players to minimum contracts unless they were previously on your team. And there's a bunch of different things that go into that as to how much you can actually offer them. But that's in essence um, the first thing you have to know. And that's what I was talking about when they lost KCP last year because they were like a second apron team last year and they lost KCP. They didn't drop even below the luxury tax line by like getting rid of him. So all you could get was a minimum contract guy still. So you had to keep him like you just had to. It was an unfortunate situation. The luxury tax line, pretty simple one. You cross that your team's going to get more expensive, right? And every year that you spend in a row in luxury tax, it gets more and more and more expensive. It compounds that interest. It's it's scary. Compound interest is scary. Um, then we have the first and second apron. These are newer to the NBA. These are things that the NBA have added just because they're sick of star players being moved all the time. It's not good for like fan numbers and stuff. They need fans invested in teams. Uh, fans don't feel as invested with teams when their players move all the time. So the NBA put these rules in place to basically be like, okay, com contending NBA teams, we're going to make it incredibly hard for you to make moves as soon as you start costing a certain amount, which is a good way to do it, right? You've got the star players if you're the ones paying everybody, right? So in order to prevent them from moving once you cross into these first and second aprons the nba starts restricting what you can do like you can't play in the buyout markets or you can only trade so much salary or you can only uh package players together so much um actually if you cross the second apron it, you you can't g gain any more salary onto your roster via trade all you can do is move down and you can't even package players together to do so so you you essentially get locked into the team you have we saw that with like the timberwolves we couldn't even like figure out a reasonable trade to make because it's like the, we're just kind of stuck where we're at so this team does have four million more dollars before it hits that they are in the first apron which does restrict them to some extent right so we are a little bit ha handcuffed with what we can do here but we can still we can still make some things work and that's what matters we have to make some sort of move this year to you know fortify the bench do something else find a valuable player that can help us right now but for the time being this is what we're working with in terms of assets. Let's go look at the rest of the team. Most expensive player on the team is Nikola Jokic. Nikola Jokic is the best basketball player in the world right now. He just is. That's that's how good he is. Great, great offseason playing in the Olympics and everything. Had a great run. Got a bronze medal. Uh, he was almost single-handedly handling Team USA at points. Nikola Jokic is great. I don't need to explain that to you. Uh, Jamal Murray didn't have as good of an Olympics. He was pretty rough. And I know he's been dealing with injuries and everything. And his playoff performance last year wasn't great. Even though dude hit some clutch shots, didn't he? He hit some crazy shots this is a guy that's won the finals before he's a very very good point guard i mean he's a guy that can go off for buckets at any point he's a winner like he's just one of those guys that even though he doesn't have like all-star games underneath his belt or anything like dude's just a winning basketball player yes the injuries are a bit of a concern and everything we'll see what we're gonna do about it i mean we all we can hope for is that he's healthy but you're not gonna lose jamal murray at this point you know him and Jokic works it's one of the best offensive combos that we have in basketball michael never swing the rock porter jr i love michael porter jr i love how much he doesn't pass the basketball he knows his role he's one of these ultimate role players he's like i'm out here to shoot the shit out of the basketball and that's what he does he 
Michael Porter Jr. could be the best shooter we have in the NBA. Like, that's a that's a pretty bold take, right? I mean, there's definitely people better than him. But in terms of just pure catch and shoot, like, oh my gosh, is he nasty. And, and honestly, Nikola Jokic would be furious, I bet, if they lost him. Because this is just an easy guy to have around a Michael Porter Jr. I talked about how important it was for Tyrese Halliburton to have Buddy Heald on his team and how dumb it was for them to move on from him, even though, like you saying, you wanted to be gone, yada, yada, yada. When you have guys that are that pass friendly, you need guys that aren't going to hesitate and they're going to get their shots up. Michael Porter Jr. does that. I've seen people question his defense and everything. Funny enough, he's got one of the best defensive ratings in basketball, and you guys are probably confused why. Defensive rating in basketball, individual defensive rating, I should clarify, is different than just like a plus minus. Uh, individual defensive rating takes into account a bunch of different things that result in stops on the basketball court. Michael Porter Jr. is really good at playing off ball defense, rebounding, causing missed shots, things like that. Like I know some of you look and like his lateral quickness isn't that great. And so him keeping like a point guard in front of him isn't necessarily going to happen. That's not the kind of defender he is. He's a, a really, really elite team defender. And honestly, that's what you need more so um, when you're trying to win a championship. So Michael Porter Jr., super valuable player, gets rebounds, does his thing, shoots the shit out of the basketball. Um, Honestly, he won me a couple games in the playoffs. He also ha struggled at points, but look, it, it happens, right? He's a good basketball player. Aaron Gordon, we know how good he can be defensively. He plays great off of Jokic. He's the cutter when Jokic is running his, like, um hub offense that they run so you need guys like that we'd like that he we would hope that he can shoot and maybe make a couple more threes this next season because 29 percent ain't cutting it right we we need a better three-point outing for him especially with the lack of depth that we have we don't want to like kill him too much too much with minutes but if we can get a three-point shot out of him that'd be great but otherwise does a lot of things really well next we have zeke naji Oh, Zeke Naji. Zeke Naji is supposed to be like a spacing center for them, a younger guy that runs up and down the floor pretty well. It's not looking, not looking great for Zeke right now. I mean, 26% from three. He's not rebounding. He's not doing much. He's been pretty ineffective out there uh, in the, as of as of late. And it's unfortunate because, man, he's got four years left on his on his contract. I believe his contract is it decreasing in value? Let me let me check. Where do we have? Um, Zeke here. Yeah, so his contract does decrease in value over time. So that makes it a little bit easier, but not necessarily anybody's going to want to take this guy. But I'm going to try to figure out a way to trade him in this video today, even with these trade restrictions that we have. So I don't know. By the way, how much do we have to lose in money before we come out of the first apron? That'd be an interesting thing to see. Like if I drop like $3 million here, nope, that's not it. If we lose another like $5 million, nope, another like $7 million. Okay, so yeah, we'd have to drop like a ton of money in order to fall in out of the apron and that's probably just unrealistic but anyway Zeke Naji is going to be a, like I hope he steps up and everything I've seen him working out a bit this off season just because uh, he works out locally here but man I don't know I don't know uh, Dario Sarge we talked about him already we talked about Westbrook DeAndre Jordan's on the team uh, we've talked about how important it is for championship teams to have these just like uh, nice vets on the team that look if they're out there they're just going to lead the team and keep them steady right they're not going to be too impactful of players at this point he can still run jump and catch a lob a little bit he'll grab a couple rebounds but look deandre is pretty past his day but it's good to have vets on the team like that it's important moving on to christian brown the guy that doesn't know how to pronounce his own name it's definitely Braun. they're just what's wrong with his family why do they think that his name is brown it's just not correct. It just isn't, right? But anyway, let's talk about him playing basketball. So he's being thrust into the first five. He was one of those late first round picks that we talked about that ended up turning into a pretty solid player. He had a really nice performance when they were in the finals. Didn't have a great season overall last year. Seven points a game. I mean, you would have liked to have seen it gone a little higher. He's not really contributing anywhere else outside of just like spot shooting for them. I mean, he, he makes some nice cuts off of passes from Jokic sometimes, and that turns into something. But Dude's going to need to step up now. I mean, he's going into his third season, so that's when you expect to see a little bit of a leap out of a guy like this. So, you know, he's on track, and, you know, being a starter at this point is nothing out of the ordinary. So it's just we're just going to need more, right? KCP's gone. He's not the defender that KCP was, but hopefully he can make up for it with, like, some shooting or something like that. But he's going to have to step up this year. He's going to be a key, key part. And if I'm being honest with you, I don't even think that he'd be my favorite 
to start right away for this team. I'd almost rather keep him off the bench. I'm a fan of trying to see what we can get out of Strother, but we'll we'll talk about him. We'll talk about him. We talked about Deron Holmes a little bit. Okay, now we're on to Strother, right? Julian Strother, I want to pull up his shot chart. So here's Julian Strother's shot chart. Now, he didn't actually convert very well from three last year, but what I liked about him is I always liked that he was taking good shots when he was out there. A lot of that's because, like, look, you got a lot of other good vets on this team, right? That's what's going to happen. So I feel like the making of a quality basketball player is here. He's got good size, too. He's like 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, he looks coordinated enough. He, I like his shot, shot form and everything. So I think we can build something out of this. Like, we've got the framework there. We just need to put some more shots in. Um, something that we saw from him is there was a little run at one point last year when they had some injuries where they had to play Strother like a few more minutes than like he's used to, right? Like now all of a sudden he's getting a couple starter level minutes and he had much better outputs. You see like these like uh, double digit scoring nights, right? And like dude was playing quality defense during that time. Certain players just need to be on the court longer and they can be more effective. So I'd be curious to see because he's going to get a chance this year. Um, again, they're, they're looking for wing help and everything and guys that can shoot and play around Jokic and everything, maybe play some defense. I'd be curious to see if we forced him into some more minutes, if we just see a lot more improvement out of him right away. So that's what I'd be curious to note is if we give him more minutes, if better things happen. Um, moving on to Kankar here, who they brought on and they actually restructured his contract a little bit as well. So good for him. Can be a spacing option for them. I'm going to get rid of uh, Strother stuff here. If we go down here to Kankar, he was hurt at points last season. Where is he? Was he out the whole season last year? Is that... Is that what was happening? Why don't why don't I remember that being the case? Let me let me duplicate this tab really quick. Was he really out the whole season? I'm learning things at the same time that you guys are. I know he was out for most of the season last year, but was, did he really not play at all? Like, no. Okay, the knee surgery took him out the whole time. Why do I remember seeing him on the court? Was he on for preseason or something like that? Maybe he was, but historically, dude's a good three-point shooter, right? Like, that's what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to be kind of a spacing four or whatever. Um, if healthy... I think there's a pretty good chance that he could end up on the court as well, right? I mean, we just we need to try something. You guys are listening to me read off the bench, guys. It's not anything too impressive. So if we can get another spacing forward, kind of like a Dario Saric out of him, great, right? I know he's pretty tight with Jokic, so I guess we'll see. Peyton Watson, another guy that, man, I hope he can step up, right? This guy's a crazy athlete, 6'8", got a really nice NBA body, right? Um, handles pretty weak can't shoot the basketball right now and the finishing was a little bit questionable if he wasn't dunking on somebody's head now again super young right he's super young there's a lot of time to grow still i mean third season we're hoping we're going to see a little bit of pickup in him i mean we can look at the numbers from last year right i mean let's just take a look at that where is peyton watson last year six to seven points a game wasn't doing much else for you on the basketball court kept the turnovers low because he didn't have the ball too much less than 30 percent from three field goal percentage wasn't, wasn't great either but again young guy championship team it's hard right this team's competing every night there's so many only so many opportunities for you but now we need you to step up we need you to step up we saw that you can be a decent defender and everything so let's hope you can turn into a three and d wing for us we're going to need you to try right we're just going to need you to try so that's what we got and then we got jalen pickett and hunter tyson two guys that don't really get on the court too much again second round picks that are kind of filling out the back half of the roster i know i've seen some nuggets fans kind of like the idea of hunter tyson again they see him in summer league and see him doing okay summer league feels like a place where he would succeed a little bit more as a spacing win I see a lot of people really not like Jalen Pickett, unfortunately. I'm not high on him either, but like, let's not hate on Jalen Pickett, right? Dude's dude's out there doing his thing. I mean, uh, I, these guys aren't going to see the floor much this year. I can't imagine they're going to, but you know, cheap guys to fill out the roster, right? So that's the roster. Let's take a look at the depth chart at the point guard spot. Feeling pretty good. We'd probably like another reserve option on this team because none of our other guards on this team can be ball handlers, or at least I wouldn't feel very good about it, right? I know they tried Christian Brown doing some point guard stuff last year out of necessity. It didn't work out great for him. Uh, so obviously you have Jokic, but we could probably use another reserve point guard or something, right? It'd be nice if we could find something like that. You go to the shooting guard and you have question mark, question mark, question mark. Okay. That's uh, maybe maybe not even a question mark for Jalen Pickett. I'm sorry I said we wouldn't pick on Jalen Pickett. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, we've got two iffy ones. We're going to see what happens. You go over to the small forward. We love Michael Porter Jr. Then we have an iffy in Peyton Watson. You go over to the power forward. You got Aaron Gordon. You got a maybe in Kankar. Maybe he's healthy. Hunter Tyson. Eh, and Deron Holmes is hurt, right? Again, they're, they're probably going to get some sort of disabled player exception. They can add someone else to the team. At the center spot, you got Jokic. I like Saric. Zeke. Ah, it'd be nice if it worked. 
And then DeAndre Jordan's there as well as just a reserve option. So not too bad there, but there's a depth problem on this team. It's very evident. What can we do to bring in some depth on this team? So first thing we're going to do in a trade is I'm going to try to trade Zeke Naji. There's got to be a way to do it in a way where we can get something more effective than what we have right now. And somebody's got to be able to benefit from having this dude. I know we've done a trade in the past in the ideal offseason series that worked out well. Maybe we'll re-explore that one. But at the very least, this is what we're looking at. We're trying to add some depth to this team and we're trying to make it work with what we got. So let's go do a couple trades. All right. So we're back here on Fanspo and I've, I've got a couple ideas in my head. I haven't fully thought them out yet, but we're going to try to execute on them. Uh, by the way, if you've never used Fanspo before, it's so much fun. I love Fanspo. I just love going through these trades and everything. We're not going to try to make them like too crazy, but look, it's hard to do straight up one to one teams at this point, like putting in like just like, oh, we're going to trade this guy for this guy. Um, In the past, we did a trade that involved like um, swapping Jared Vanderbilt and Zeke Naji because it helps the Lakers save a little bit of money long term. They're both on longer term contracts and Zeke Naji's actually gets cheaper over time. So if things don't work out for them this season, they could maybe have a young player that they could try to develop. They've been looking for like spacing forwards and stuff. Jared Vanderbilt is hard for them to play with their current guys. So there is a world where you could do a trade like this and um before I included like second round picks in it and stuff. So we need to cut like another 1.8 million. So we just send over like um, Jalen Pickett or Hunter Tyson, one of those guys, right? It's another part of the uh, genius of this front office to have guys like that on their team to help facilitate these trades. But I don't know. Now that the Nuggets don't really have the second round picks, I see it as a little bit harder to do. But again, maybe the Lakers are just interested in, in it financially. So... I've got an idea here that involves Cameron Johnson, because I feel like there's some teams that'd be interested in Cameron Johnson. I'm not saying he's going to go to Denver. I have an idea, and I'm starting to get this idea in my head that the Hornets are going to be buyers in some capacity this year. They're going to be like, okay, how do we add like more talent to this team? And I could see them being interested in Cameron Johnson. Um, so he would go over there to the Hornets. We need to make this work somehow. The, the, the Nets obviously need to start selling things, so we send... Grant Williams back there and we also ask them to take Zeke Naji for us because they can afford to take him on right now and we will pay them to take him on right now who are we getting back from this I envision us getting Misich back we could use another point guard like I said he's played with um Jokic before so I could see something like this working out well where, where then they're giving up like a first round pick or something then right because they're the ones getting Cameron Johnson in this in this deal so we send back like this pick or something i don't even know if that pick makes a ton of sense but a first round pick i like this we save a little bit of money right we get another point guard which we were talking about needing he's a pass first guy you can play him rotational minutes misich was a nice player for charlotte and okc this last year he plays with Jokic. he's very familiar with him so that could be a valuable thing in itself but let's go try to execute another one of these i, I have like one maybe one and a half more ideas that involve signachi is there any way that we can steal the the big man we've been looking for from the portland trailblazers if we pay them let's just say we really are like believing that robert williams is playing good basketball this year we're trading him to the nuggets right and we're willing to give up a first round pick to do so but we have to do a little bit more because of the way the salary cap is set up but we can package players we can package players so we send over Pickett, and then i'm gonna assume we got to send over like can car to make that money work i was doing mental math in my head that works i could see this being a trade that they do if robert williams is looking okay he'd be an instant impact guy for you, you even clear up two roster spots that you can use to go get like a couple of their minimum contract guys or something that might exist out there maybe you find a doug mcdermott or markel fultz i don't know somebody else that's out there i don't know right but find somebody and like this this is a good bench player he's gonna play elite defense for you've been looking for a rim defender that could be your option so that's another one i have let me try and think of one more because I have like half an idea in my head. So what's the other big thing that's trying to happen? The Grizzlies have been trying to find a center and I feel like we can help facilitate a deal between, do I want to say the Hawks? Like Clint Capella is like the first one that comes to mind for me. Can we send Clint Capella to the Grizzlies and help them execute this somehow? How exactly do we do that? So Brandon Clark has to move. 
Brandon Clark we could send back to, let's just say, um, Atlanta's selling things. It's not going well this year. Maybe they want another younger guy that can play with Trey Young. He can be a run, jump, and dunk threat with him. Send him over to the Hawks, right? Save a little bit of money on this. Uh, you've got him for a little bit to figure out if he's going to be good. Is Brandon Clark already 28? God damn. When did that happen? Um, they got to take Zeke Naji from us then. Um, and they're taking on a decent amount of money here, but I don't know. We can, we can mess around with this and fuddle with this. Maybe we can give them one of our picks or something like that, right? Or somebody can give somebody a pick. The Grizzlies got picks. They, we'll give you guys a pick because we're getting Clint Capella in this. Maybe we'll even just give you like a couple seconds or something like that. We'll trade that over to the Hawks and you can have like, you can have your second round pick back. Congratulations. There you go. Uh, what are we getting in this is the question. What are we getting? Is there a way... Larry Nance would be another guy that would be interesting to see if we could make a trade happen like that. And we won't be able to do it financially in this one because it's the $8 million coming out. They've got one player coming in. Can we do something like... Can, they're not going to give us LaRavia. They'll give us Conchar, though. Send Conchar back to us. Does this work in it of itself? Conchar is a nice, like, versatile player that they could probably use, kind of like a Bruce Brown, like a poor man's Bruce Brown. Something like this works. And honestly, like, we could probably get someone to throw something else in just because, like, the Hawks need to get rid of a cheap player. Like, they're not going to give us Vit, but would they give us, like, a Garrison Matthews or something like that? Like, trade him to the Nuggets as well? Because, like, why the hell not? Like, yeah, I could see something like this happening, too. This feels like maybe a little bit more realistic. So, I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. Those are our trades. Let's go take a look at rotations. Alrighty, we're here on the rotation screen. Um, I always put a question mark on it because I don't, I don't know what the rotation is going to be at the end of the day. I just don't, right? I mean, this is just an activity that we do as coaches to be like, okay, where do we kind of want players' minutes to average out at, right? That's kind of what I'm thinking. So, starting out with the first five, I've got Jamal Murray and Jokic playing the most minutes, about 32, right? We don't need to, like, exhaust them completely during the regular season, but we we also don't have a ton of depth and so it's kind of a hard thing to balance i'd prefer to keep them around those minutes if i if we could michael porter jr and aaron gordon also going to be playing upwards of that many minutes i mean we just we just don't have the depth right now someone else is gonna to have to prove it to us and christian brown is playing starter level minutes right i mean we've got the 26 we're in the green here so uh, if you guys weren't aware once i drop it to like 24 i think is yeah so that's where it is for that um once you get below like 25, that's considered like non-starter level minutes, at least coaching terms, right? And NBA standards, of course. But he's going to have to prove himself. We're going to give other guys opportunities to do it at well. I mean, he's going to get first dibs at it because he's shown a little bit more already, but that's where we're at. Russell Westbrook going to be playing starter level minutes. He's the most obvious, like competent NBA player coming off our bench, right? He's more than competent. He's a good basketball player, right? So he's going to get starter level minutes for us. We're not sure how, if he can play with like a Jamal Murray or something like that. We just don't know. We haven't seen Jamal Murray play a ton of off ball with anybody besides Jokic. Um, Julian Strother, I want to give him a decent amount of minutes to see if he can be a wing for us. Like I said, um, when we were looking at like his numbers and everything, we saw when you get him up past a certain point, you see quality of basketball rise. So I want to experiment with that. Sarge is going to get 20 minutes. I mean, We'll see what we can get out of him, right? I mean, hopefully he can be a nice floor spacer for us, get some rebounds, stuff like that. Peyton Watson, got to get him on the court as well, see if he can become something. If he's going to be something, I could see him moving up and taking Strother's spot and anybody else, really. It's up for grabs. And then I'm going to throw Kankar out there, just see if something happens, right? Hopefully he's healthy enough and maybe could hit some threes for us. And then... Got a lot of question marks down here. It would have been great to have Deron Holmes here. He could have easily slid into like seventh man for this team. Like, ah, uh, it's just such a shame. It's such a shame. We'll see what they do if they add any more players to this team. I mean, even today when I'm recording this, like the Warriors are bringing Kevin Knox in for like a workout and stuff. And uh, he's going to be in their training camp and guys like that. I mean, I don't know. There's got to be someone else we can bring into this team. Like I said, Doug McDermott's who comes to mind, but that's what we got. We can take a look at rotations and stuff. And I mean, you guys aren't going to be surprised by this, but the starting five for them last year was really good and they used it a lot. Even when you take Jamal Murray out and you put Reggie Jackson in, this core four is really, really, really good. It is what it is, right? I mean, if you start to look at some of their negative ones that had higher minutes, we had Peyton Watson in with Reggie Jackson, Christian Brown. Again, you start to put the bench in, things fell apart, even with Jokic on the court, which is just nuts to say, right? Because he can be really impactful with not a lot out there. And then we had this lineup of Reggie Jackson, Strother, Peyton Watson, Christian Brown, Zeke Naji, just all bench guys, and that's why that didn't work. Our best three-man combo was Jokic, Brown, and Caldwell Pope, actually. There wasn't a ton of minutes behind it, but otherwise, it's a combination of the starters. Jokic, Murray, Porter, Murray, Jokic, Caldwell Pope, Gordon, Jokic, Murray. You guys get it. 
Uh, I'm going to look at two-man combinations, too, just because I'm curious. The best one was Brown and Jokic, funny enough, but then you get into Jokic, Murray, Murray, Caldwell, Pope, Caldwell, Pope, Jokic. It's it's the starters, right? The starters of this team are still some of the toughest to beat in basketball. It is what it is, and Brown is a part of that, right? Like, he's a good basketball player. So we hope that the first five will still be able to win us a lot of games. We get to here, I still feel okay. Then I get a little bit scared. So we're going to see, but let's move on to predictions. All righty, y'all. Only two left, and I mean, not much of a drum roll here. I mean, let's just let's just click this thing, right? Nuggets got them as the four seed. That's where I've got them right now. So we've got a full Western preview now. It's exciting. You guys can agree or disagree. Tell me what you think down in the comments below. I'm curious to hear. We've got the Thunder, Mavericks, Timberwolves, Nuggets as the first four. Kings, Pelicans as the next couple playoff teams are playing as Suns, Grizzlies, Lakers, Spurs. Um, and I mean, I'll tell you guys, one through eight, I can see them being interchangeable. Nine through 12, 13, I could see them being interchangeable. I've seen nobody disagree with me about the Jazz and Trailblazers, so take that as you will. But hey, this is where I pass it off to you guys. You guys let me know down in the comments below. What do you think of this team? Where do you think they're going to go? What kind of moves could they make? They've got to make some moves. You guys got to give me some ideas. Hop on the Discord. We have got a little trade ideas channel. Post them in there. We love commenting on them. And by the way, to all of you on the Discord, thank you guys. You guys are keeping me sane during this basketball season. You all know who you are. You're so active on there, and I love you guys for it. Thank you. Thank you so much. But anyway, leave me a comment below. Share this with your friends. Give it a like. It's the dead part of the season, so my views are down. Help me out a little bit. But anyway, it's been awesome giving you guys these videos. We got one more after this. We got the Cavs for you to watch tomorrow, and then we're on to the season and back to some other content. So let me know what else you guys want to see. But anyway, thanks so much. We'll see you. Bye.